Embryological development are a series of complex and intricate processes that ultimately allow the zygote following fertilization to develop into the billions and billions of cells that make up the adult individual. And in this lecture, we're going to discuss the first two processes of embryological development. We're going to focus on cleavage as well as blastulation. But first, let's begin by taking a look at the following diagram that describes the structure of the female reproductive system. So we have the ovary, we have the fallopian tube, and we have the uterus. Now, what happens inside the ovary? Well, inside the ovary, we have the development of that oocyte. The oocyte is found inside the follicle. So the primary follicle becomes a secondary follicle. In the process, we produce estrogen. And the estrogen, what it does is it begins the thickening of the lining of the uterus. It initiates the thickening of the endometrium that is needed for implantation to actually take place. So eventually, when we form the mature secondary follicle, ovulation takes place and that follicle ruptures, releasing that secondary oocyte, the egg cell, into the peritoneal cavity. And from the peritoneal cavity, the secondary oocyte moves into our fallopian tube, this structure right here. Now, the fallopian tube basically acts as a passageway and allows the movement of the secondary oocyte, the egg cell, along this canal and into the uterus. So inside the fallopian tube, the cells that line the fallopian tube contain cilia and the wave-like motion of the cilia allows the movement of that oocyte along the fallopian tube. In addition, the peristalsis, the contraction of the muscle along the fallopian tube also allows the movement of that oocyte along that canal and to the uterus. Now, let's suppose that this particular individual undergoes sexual intercourse so that sperm cells are deposited into the vaginal cavity. From the vaginal cavity, those sperm cells move into the uterus and eventually make their way into the fallopian tube. And at this portion, at the thickest portion of the fallopian tube, a single sperm cell will combine with the secondary OSI. And this is the process of fertilization. So fertilization takes place within this section. Now, following fertilization, we have an influx of calcium ions into the cytoplasm of that formed zygote. And what the influx of calcium ions does is it initiates a set of metabolic processes. For example, it initiates the cortical reaction and this leads to the formation of a membrane that basically is impermeable to sperm cells. So no other sperm cell can actually make its way into that egg cell. Now, the influx of calcium ions also initiates other metabolic processes such as protein synthesis and, and eventually this leads to the process of mitosis. So the zygote begins to divide following uh, shortly afterwards the process of fertilization. Now, why would the zygote actually want to or need to divide? Well, because the entire organism contains cells. The building blocks of the organism are cells. And that means we have to take that single cell zygote and develop as many cells as possible. And that's exactly why mitosis begins to take place shortly following fertilization. So right about here, we have the first mitotic process take place. And the unicellular zygote begins to undergo mitosis. It replicates the DNA and then cytokinesis takes place and we form a structure that contains two identical cells that are equal size and which have the same exact genetic information. Now, by definition, a zygote only consists of one cell. And as soon as we form these two cells, this is no longer a zygote, but now we refer to it as the developing embryo. So this is a two-celled embryo, which is found right about here. 
Now following this process, two cells are not enough. We have to produce hundreds of cells. And so what happens is these two cells begin to divide via the same process, mitosis, so they produce a four-celled embryo. And so now we have these four identical cells that contain the same exact genetic information and this process doesn't stop here it continues eventually we form a structure that consists of 32 identical cells that all carry the same exact genetic information at this point these individual cells are called blastomeres and this entire structure is called the morula now what the morula is is this spherical structure of identical cells and this is a structure that is uh, that exists during the process of cleavage so everything we discussed so far which are basically very quick and very rapid mitotic divisions this process is known as cleavage and during cleavage the cells individual cells do not actually grow in fact the cells get smaller and smaller but these cells are identical they carry the same exact genetic information and they are of equal size so what exactly is the purpose of cleavage? Well, the purpose of cleavage is to actually partition that zygote into many identical cells so that we can use these identical cells later on as the building blocks to actually form that developing embryo and eventually form that organism, the adult organism. So this is the process of, uh, this is the process of cleavage. Now let's move on to the process known as blastulation. So this structure here, the morula, will continue dividing. These individual cells, the blastomeres, will continue to divide via mitosis until we form a sphere that consists of hundreds of cells. And inside the sphere, we're going to have a hollow cavity that will consist of fluid. And this entire structure is called the blastula. And this process is known as blastulation. Now, in humans and other mammals, the blastula is also known as a blastocyst, and the inner cavity, the fluid-filled cavity of that structure is known as a blastocele. So this is the process of blastulation. So the morula, the individual cells of the morula will continue to divide via the process of mitosis and eventually they will begin to organize themselves into this three-dimensional structure shown here known as the blastocyst or the blastula. So notice we have three important components of the blastocyst. We have this outer structure of cells known as the trophoblast. We have this inner collection of cells found on one side known as the inner cell mass. And then we have this hollow cavity that contains a fluid that is used to basically provide the nutrition to these cells that the cells need to actually grow, uh, grow and develop. And this cavity is known as a blastocele. Now, what exactly is the function of the inner cell mass? and the trophoblast. Well, the trophoblast will eventually develop into the chorion and the placenta of the fetus, while the inner cell mass, these cells here shown in light purple, will eventually develop into the actual organism, into the uh, tissues, into the uh, organs and the systems of that individual. Now notice everything we've discussed so far was actually before implantation took place. So during fertilization, this zygote begins to move. It undergoes the first mitotic division and right about here we form that morula or the morula. And what this morula consists of is these 32 identical cells that carry the same exact genetic information and which are of equal size. And eventually as this structure moves its way and makes its way into the actual space of the uterus, it develops 
into the blastula via the process of blastulation. So this is this structure right here. And eventually what happens is five to eight days following fertilization, that blastula will implant itself onto the endometrium, the lining of that uterus that was prepared by the two hormones, estrogen, as well as progesterone that were released by the corpus luteum. Now, only if implantation actually takes place can the blastula develop into the next structure, and we're going to focus on that in the next lecture.